Hi, and welcome back to GCSE History Lessons. In this lesson, we will examine the arms race between the USA and USSR. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the reason for and impact of the arms race, and be able to recall some key statistics about American and Russian military capabilities during the Cold War. From previous lessons, you should remember that in July 1945, the US's Manhattan Project successfully detonated the first nuclear weapon. And later that year, two atomic bombs were dropped on Japan to force its surrender and end World War II. You will also remember that the USSR was a massive military power during World War II, having been responsible for 93% of all Nazi deaths and invading Japan at the end of the war with a force of over 1 million soldiers. The USSR also won the race to Berlin to defeat Nazi Germany in May 1945. The use of nuclear weapons became a status symbol amongst world powers, as well as providing an obvious military and political tool. In fact, even more so the military capability of nuclear weapons was the ability of countries in possession of these bombs to use nuclear blackmail or the threat of a nuclear attack to get what they wanted politically. An early example of this was when the USA flew 60 B-29 bombers to the UK amidst the Berlin crisis. Because the USSR did not know whether the planes could carry nuclear weapons, it was far more likely to back down from a confrontation. It comes as no surprise, then, that the USSR put great emphasis on developing its own nuclear bomb, even before the USA had revealed it. The USSR used espionage to spy on the US Manhattan Project. With nuclear physicists such as Klaus Falsch passing some secrets of the nuclear bomb onto the USSR, the Soviet Union managed to copy the ideas of the USA's plutonium bomb, but it was still a long way from being a reality. The American CIA reckoned in July 1949 that Stalin wouldn't have his bomb until mid-1953, but the Americans underestimated the USSR's resourcefulness and the power of the command economy to focus an enormous part of the Soviet Union's workforce towards this goal. Stalin used the notorious Gulag prison camps in remote Russia, which had 5.5 million prisoners working in uranium mines by 1953. The Soviets successfully detonated their first atomic bomb on August 29, 1949, much sooner than the CIA had thought. The significance of this event cannot be understated. From August 1949 onward, the USA was not the only country in the world capable of wiping cities off the map in a single blow. The two great rivals of the Cold War were now armed with weapons of mass destruction. For many people living at the time, having just witnessed two world wars, nuclear war between the USA and USSR seemed more and more likely. In response, in January 1950, Truman gave the order for the development of a more powerful thermonuclear hydrogen bomb. When the USA tested the new H-bomb on November 1st, 1952, the blast completely vaporised the Eniwetok Atoll island where it was tested. It was 1,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped in Hiroshima, but the USA's H-bomb was not a deliverable weapon. This time the Soviets beat them to it, detonating their own deliverable H-bomb, on August 12, 1953. Leading US scientists called the new bomb a weapon of genocide, which carries the policy of extermination of civilian populations. Churchill stated that the hydrogen bomb was as far from the atomic bomb as the atomic bomb itself from the bow and arrow. The USSR then set about developing missile systems which could launch nuclear weapons. It did so on August 21, 1949 when it launched an R-7 missile 4,000 miles into the Pacific Ocean. It was the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM, and also set it on track to be the first of the superpowers to put satellites into space. The possibility of Soviet nuclear missiles in space shook Washington to its core. By the end of 1960, the USSR had four ICBMs and the USA had 42. A little more than a year later, the USSR still possessed four ICBMs. The USA had 224. By 1962, the USA's missiles were also more lightweight and ran on solid fuel, which could be launched instantly, less dangerous than Soviet liquid fuel versions. The arms race, therefore, put the world in an incredibly dangerous position. 
Any conflict between the USA and USSR after 1949 could very possibly lead to all-out nuclear war. With the invention of the H-bomb and ICBMs, the ability of these two nations to vaporise entire cities at the touch of a button was not hyperbole. As we said earlier, the arms race was also political and ideological as much as it was a military competition. If the USA's atomic bomb was a testament to the achievements of Western capitalism and society, the USSR's ability to make an ICBM and hydrogen bomb before the United States could shows that during the first decades of the Cold War, the choice between communism and capitalism was not an obvious one. Although the USA eventually maintained a rate of nuclear weapon and missile production which the USSR could not match, the spectacular successes of Soviet military and industry demonstrated the power of the Soviet system to the world. So, to summarise what we've learned today, atomic bombs were created by the USA in July 1945 and by the USSR in August 1949. The USSR used spies and its command economy to develop its bomb much sooner than the USA expected. The USSR launched the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, in August 1949. These allowed the USSR to hit targets with nuclear bombs from great distances, as well as the possibility of putting bombs into space. Hydrogen bombs were developed by the USA in November 1952 and the USSR developed the deliverable version in August 1953. Hydrogen bombs were many times more powerful than atomic bombs and incapable of separating civilian and military targets in war. They were described as weapons of genocide. Throughout the 1950s, the USSR and USA had stockpiles of weapons, but the USA was able to create many more by 1960. There were multiple impacts of the arms race. There was greater rivalry between the USA and USSR, with the new threat of a nuclear war. The USSR and USA were both now able to use nuclear blackmail to force other countries to do as they pleased. The USSR's command economy was legitimised as capable of competing with Western capitalism. Next lesson, we will take a look at the Warsaw Pact. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on GCSE History Lessons.